Yeah, I love how Ivy compliments Chloe. Like, that was really good. You, you did such yes, a great you job. You were so oh my good God, at girl. other people dying. <laughs> yeah. You really watched what? that guy die to the best of your ability. We watched the <laughs> shit out of that guy dying together. Yes, we did. <laughs> You made his dying breath be an apology to somebody that's not there. Yeah. <laughs> well done. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because the line for smashing our own testicles with a garlic press was too long. Suffering to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you. I feel welcome. And suffering 989 miles to my right is my other good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how you holding up, bro? So we're just ruled out the garlic press thing. Yeah, just, unfortunately. That's off the table at this point. <laughs> It's, There's one more movie. Get one of those buzzers. Uh, They'll call us when it's right. Yeah. Unfortunately, and joining us for the first time is actor, writer, comedian, improv artist, and special guest masochist Nick Carrillo. Nick, welcome to God Awful Movies. Hello, hello. I'm glad to be here. So, uh, before we get started, Heath, what's on tap tonight? We've got Left Behind Episode 2, Tribulation Force. Yes, we do. It is the... Attack of the Clones of Left Behind Movies. So, get excited. <laughs> Worse and somehow unimaginably more racist. Oh my god, it's <laughs> so the all odds. awful. Now, I-, I should mention that last week we had Devin Heater on the show, and you'll recall that he was part of a three-man apocalypse-themed improv team called Gus for Generic Underground Shelter. And after we finished recording, Devin told us that Nick is actually the funny guy on the team. So we reached out to him this week, and for some reason he agreed to join us. Uh, so Nick, let-, let me ask you, how long did it take to regret that decision? You know, I was telling Eli right now, I actually was thoroughly entertained by this movie. Uh, huh. I was laughing the whole way through. Hmm. Right on. Well, that's it's 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 good to do something new on this show. Now, Nick, you strike me as the kind of kid who rented Faces of Death and showed it to everyone at a party. In I high absolutely. I, actually, my dad showed me that movie. And I, was like, I was like, yeah, I love it. Uh, I want to see more. He's in jail now. Yeah. <laughs> He's got priors. He's in jail. So now this fucks me all up because my next question is how bad is this movie? And now I just don't even know what to ask you. So I guess how good? Was this oh, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. This is a terrible movie. <laughs> and I, and I, you could see it on everyone's face except for maybe Kirk Cameron, who's having a grand old time. Um, cause I looked up a lot of these people to see, like, are they just Christian actors? They know, no, like the guy who plays the Antichrist, Nikolai, is like, well, tried to be a legit actor. Uh-huh. He's in like a lot of horror movies. So, I mean, it's, it's a terrible movie, but it's like watching a car crash. You know, you can't look away. There's something about it that you're you're kind of enjoying watching, but you also like feel very bad. It's like watching a car crash where one person is enjoying the car crash. <laughs> Kurt Cameron's yeah. in the middle, just being like, "This is gonna be fun." Yeah. He's in that driver's seat, having a great time, and everybody's screaming in pain and agony. Thanks, America. That's a lot like this movie. We're so, liars. We deserve this. Uh, Heath, what do you think? Uh, a plus on good, double plus on good. Where are we at? Uh, well, when I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes. A homeless person literally threw a tomato at me. So, mm-hmm. not a good That's a new feature. You gotta pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Eli, on a scale of a surprise urination stream fork that hits your pant leg to being anally raped by a were porcupine, where's this movie fall on the spectrum, you think? Oh, okay. So it's, one of those is good, usually on a scale. And so I gotta, I gotta assume that the urination stream fork is, is surprising in a good way. You're like, oh, maybe there's a second hole in my dick. <laughs> so, well, that's w- the good go end with- of the scale. Yes, <laughs> relatively speaking, there's always a good end of the scale. Yeah, I, I would I would say that this movie falls into the um, running t- into your ex with your dad at the grocery store. Oh, that's on on a scale of one to however, it's running into your ex with your dad, and she's like, "Oh, who are you with?" Well, it's, uh, me and Dave are just oh oh oh, oh, oh Dave now, <laughs> Dave. You're dating okay. my dad. That's awkward. Okay. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Just crying because they don't make frosted flakes anymore. They're right behind you. Well, they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> I ate some bad samples. <laughs> now I, I'm I'm curious too, Nick. Did you did you end up watching the first one, or or you just did this one cold? 
I did this one cold. I thought about watching the first one, um, and I realized that I don't think I really needed to, so I watched the second. I just went into it, jumped right in. You oh. must have been lost. That's well. That's I was going to say. I mean, did did you get the impression watching this like that if you had watched the first one, it would make sense? Because I can disabuse you from that <laughs> illusion. I'm just... No, I felt. No, I felt. Yeah, I felt that I was not going to get any more information if I would have seen the first one. I, I mean, I I figured a lot of people went missing. I looked up the. <laughs> The synopsis of the first one, and was like, "All right, that's enough for me." Right. Well, that, I wish I could have got away with the same. Uh, now, of course, we're going to have a lot of listeners out there in, in the same position as Nick who haven't seen the first one. So, uh, Eli Heath, anybody care to catch us up on all the action from part one? Sure. In one sentence, God made everybody disappear, so let's thank him. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right, well, before we can get into all the exciting nothing happening that this movie has in store for us, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll prove that at least they earn the word tribulation in the title. Uh, excuse me, God, uh, the four horsemen are here to see you. Oh, great. Uh, send them in. Guys, guys, great to see you. Oh, it's great, great to see you. Great to be here. I'm a horseman. Uh, so, guys, here we are. Look, the apocalypse. This is the big one. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, pestilence. What's going on, man? You killed half of Europe yet? Uh, I, I gotta say, I, I take the blame for this one. I, I had this plague ready to go. I took my eye off the ball for 400 quick years. And they've completely figured out how to fight this thing off. This is This is totally my bad. Okay, well, rather than focus on problems, let's talk solutions. What are you working on right now? Uh, honestly, I, I got nothing. I mean, they cured milk leg. Milk leg was my plan B, so it's okay. It's not looking okay. Good. I understand. It's, you know, keep working on it. Uh, famine. What are we looking at? Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm really in the same boat. Um, what is it? Ref- ref- refrigeration? Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. That's it's, it. I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but uh, can, pass. Can I pass? I, I pass. I sure, pass too. We'll, we'll put a pin in that. And we'll come back to it. Uh, war. Come on, man. What's going on? You're gonna bring a thousand years of darkness. Talk to me. How are you gonna make it happen? Yes, uh, well, again, um, you remember how when those people had chariots of iron, it just, it just totally fucked us up. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I do. Did they find more chariots of iron, or is it... Yeah, uh, kinda. They have, like, helicopters and stuff now. I have a black horse and a giant sword. Is there a way we can arrange for me to have a helicopter? An Apache or something? No, no, no I mean, I, first of all, I, not really in the budget. Um, whew. okay, death. Death, come on, death. They haven't beaten you. What do you got for me? Uh, well, to be honest, my problem isn't really with the humans. Uh, okay, what's the, what's the problem? Well, if, if you'll excuse me, my problem is with you. Ooh. Me? Yeah. What did I do? Well, I, I mean, you raptured 140 million people. So, I, and now when I kill somebody, I, you know, they're like, oh, wow, that's real sad that he had a heart attack and everything. But, but remember when, God killed all the babies, and it just it, it it doesn't even have any impact anymore. Ooh, that's true. That, that I mean, that is true. I whoo. I mean, any ideas on on how to kill the human being? <sighs> Anything the humans can't already do better themselves or overcome through science and ingenuity? Anything? I, I, just throw I, it out there. I, I mean, you want to? I, I you want to just let them do it themselves? I guess we could do that. Hey, they're good <sighs> at that. They're good at yeah, that. Yeah. All right, fine. We're going to let them do it themselves. Okay, but seriously, guys, in a thousand years, I want you to come at this thing, okay? Who wants to get chilies? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. I I go love it. What about milk leg? And now that Nick's bribes are all sorted out, we're back and ready to take on the follow-up to last week's insult to moving pictures, pictures, and movement in general left behind. And since we're not going to be doing any making sense in this movie, we open on a bunch of missing child posters in a world where all the children are known to be missing. <laughs> Seems like a waste of paper. Yeah, exactly. The, the the opening of this movie already makes no sense. So just right. just to set the scene, our our main character is walking through what appears to be some kind of memorial, but the memorial is just missing posters. Now, at this point, just so everyone's clear on the plot, everyone knows everyone's gone. No one is under the impression that people are missing. Right. So it's sort of like if instead of a graveyard, it was just a bunch of stuff nailed to a telephone pole. <laughs> That's the universe. It's just like, I did. also, ma- also, if you're the 175th person who adds a missing poster to that board, <laughs> you got to start to know what's up. 
Oh, wow, it's weird. Must be Bonnaroo. Also missing. <laughs> Even more missing than everyone else. People have pictures of babies up there. Right. Babies aren't missing. They're gone. There's no... I don't know where he went. Answers to the name... <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Uh, at which point we get Kirk Cameron, who sort of recaps the first movie very conveniently for us. He tells us, every child on Earth is missing, which is interesting because you have to ask, what is the cutoff age? Why haven't you told us that information? Right. <laughs> You're a news reporter. Also, in this report, Kirk Cameron looks like a little boy wearing his father's suit. Like, the <laughs> desk looks too big. He's just like, his head's barely poking up over it. He's like, anyways... <laughs> Hey, welcome to News for Kids, starring <laughs> Kurt Cameron. And then, of course, he points out that all of the children in the world went missing, and that it means that hundreds of millions of people are missing, which right. I did a quick Google, 1.9 billion yes. children on Earth in 1980, which means that not all of the children went up. There's a whole bunch of Satanist children just wandering around on an island somewhere. Evil babies. Well, and he also mentions in this in this opening that it's been one week. You know, they establish it's been one week since the rapture, which means this happens like the day after the last movie. And yet somehow everybody has a different hairdo now and different like facial hair. And the chick doesn't have a nose ring anymore or a hole where it used to be. It's kind of an odd. It's been an odd week. Yeah, this, this, I, I should point out that, again, if you saw movie one and movie two, you'll get to see this for yourself. But if you didn't, the characters look like after, the, like the rap move, the rap party for movie one was crazy. Like everyone did <laughs> math and fucked each other. And, and the girl who plays Amy just ate all the old country buffet. She just ate the entire <laughs> old country buffet on her own. Cause everyone's fat. Vladimir Putin's skeleton looks even worse for some reason. <laughs> He looks like someone put a curse on Justin Timberlake's dad. It's just a whole... Everyone... No one maintained their physical appearance no. from movie one to movie two, except for Kirk Cameron, who I assume slept on set like fucking... Uh, there will be blood... What's his name? Oh, 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 uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. I'm guessing he He's, pulled a Daniel Day-Lewis and Daniel slept... Daniel Day-Lewis in these movies. <laughs> lived, in, lived, on the, lived in a little tent on set and was like, no, I'm Buck Williams. I'm a reporter. I've got to say, Kirk, we don't have location for any longer. I'll pee myself again. All right, fine. <laughs> fine, we're going to use this in another... It's just an abandoned church anyway. And, of course, among the worldwide audience who watches Kirk Cameron in his dad's suit delivering the news is the Antichrist, uh, who we see in the U.N. General Assembly room with him and his buddies, because apparently they just hang out in that room to watch the news. And so they're watching Kirk Cameron on the news, and they're all ex- and, 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 and Nikolai has this, um, you know, Emperor Palpatine moment where he's like, people trust him. He will join us or die yeah. for no fucking reason. Well, for absolutely no reason. The Antichrist wants Kirk on his team. Also, I have to point out, if you were confused at this point in the movie, it's because no one fucking get introduced. We just know that there's an evil guy who looks like stage two cancer George McFly watching the news <laughs> and wanted Kirk Cameron to join him. Maybe I if I hadn't been so busy with that book, I would have caught the lump in my thigh. <laughs> I didn't know. I like that they specifically made the Antichrist Russian. Also, uh, they had it played by a guy who's from Canada. Yes. Do a terrible Russian accent. Uh, <laughs> but I just love how they were like, what's, what's something that we can relate to? What's villain? Uh, oh, uh, uh, we'll make him Russian. We'll make that guy definitely a Russian, and everyone will make sense of it. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I get it, I get it. He's yeah, a yeah, Russian, yeah, of course. Yeah, Russian Antichrist. I should point out, uh, speaking to his Russian accent, his Russian accent gets thicker every scene in the movie. He is turning into a <laughs> Russian, like a werewolf, but with Russian. He's a rush wolf. <laughs> Through, I don't know who, his dialect coach was Boris and Natasha from the Rocky Horror Show. Moose and Squirrel. Moose and Squirrel. All right, we're ready for you. Great. Moose and Squirrel. Moose and Squirrel. This is like, uh, this is Russian in an improv scene. I've seen like kids in jams of, of improv and like do this Russian accent and like better actually. But yeah. He, he like, there's words that he'll say at one point and then he says it and this time he puts a real Russian uh, accent on it, and I, I loved it. That was part of the fun. Well, part and of the and movie. sometimes yeah. the accent would just change altogether, and he'd be like a South African German or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. So and I was gonna say, cause, so I didn't see the first one. So the first one, I, I what I gathered was that the rapture took place, and all these kids went missing, mm-hmm. which is crazy to me, because I guess they're trying to say that all the kids are innocent, so all these kids are gone because they went up to heaven. 
Which doesn't really make any sense because not all kids are innocent. Some kids are assholes and would definitely still be in the world. I, it, that didn't make any sense to me. I was like, just if you're a kid, you're automatically, you're in. You did it. That's that's what Kirk Cameron believes, I guess. I guess. And, and I'm thinking about myself, well, what about like grown up, like retarded people who are mentally yeah. like 11? Yeah. I had a note about that too. What about retarded people? Maybe they like, just didn't put up the missing posters for them because they're like, nah, you know, they're probably somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to know. Uh, weren't you in charge of a special ed? No, 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 no. They all got raptured. Must no, all they took them. off. Uh, they're, they're fine. They're doing fine. What are all those helmets? Cops Nothing. Are, Nothing. C- cops are shooting everybody. Stays out after nine anyway. So don't worry about it. Right. So, yeah, and that's how we see just how bad the world's gotten. There's a couple of kids trying to break into a van. Some cops pull up on... Fucking motorcycles and 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 gun them to death, and machine gun yes, them to death. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Mach- use M 16s to machine gun Saw teenagers. In half. Teenage Jean Valjean, <laughs> who's stealing a loaf of bread to feed his sister's son, gets gets blasted to the ground with an M sixteen. At which point, Kirk Cameron reenacts the nihilist scene from The Big Lebowski, where he's like, "You can't just do that," and they're like, "We are nihilists." <laughs> So now we get Kirk wandering into uh, GNN, and I just want to point out, okay, so you're hearing some stuff in the background of, like, the news that's playing, and they're talking about a couple of people um, getting burned to death at the Wailing Wall and the Wailing Wall being shut down. Okay, this is just, like, being worked into the background so that we know about it later. But the question that the person is asking as uh, Kirk walks by the TV or whatever is she says, well, people don't just burn to death in the middle of the day. What happened? I'm like, what time of day is appropriate for burning to death? Right. Listen, if it was 8 p.m., like just like after that Seinfeld would comes sense. on, sure, people burn That's to death. I get it. Flame, also, I want to point out two things. We're This movie, we're introduced to Steve Plank. Yes. And I just want to point out that the characters in this movie are have names like they are made up by a child for their action figures. Like, <laughs> this is newsman Steve Plank, and this is Buck Williams. <laughs> and this is Blade Shark Tooth. <laughs> and it's just like everyone's got a name that is so clearly made up last minute under torture. <laughs> there's there's a, the captain is Captain Steel. He's Ray Steel. It's actually right? it's Rayford. Rayford. Rayford Steel. Steel. Yeah. Rayford, Rayford Steel. Not Steel. even Raymond. It's Rayford yes. Steel. Yeah. Buck Williams is the weirdest name. It's like they should have just cut him Hudson Hawk at that point. <laughs> and just had him. Be, I was like, nobody. That's not a real name. Nobody. What's? Uh, that's not a reporter's name. Hey, Johnny Quest. Why don't you? <laughs> yeah, Johnny Are Quest. you doing Howard's or explosive guy? There's, yeah. a, there's also a beautiful moment as he walks into the office. There's very clearly a hey, Mister Williams. AD yard in yes, he over almost... someone being like, Kirk, this way. This way, Kirk. <laughs> towards the fucking camera. Jesus. It's guess... so clear that Kirk was just wandering around randomly being like, <laughs> they were like, Kirk, and he was like, ah, ah. I, I have Comfort. a feeling, I have a feeling Kirk was just walking around and they're like, you need, you're, there's specific blocking you to follow. He goes, no, no, no. God will show me the way. <laughs> 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 no, 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 Kirk, look this way. This is where the camera is. Oh, God's put the camera over here. There's nothing there. And this is, I just, this is such spectacularly good dialogue. The guy on the TV says, and remember, Rabbi Ben Jewy Jew will reveal the single biggest piece of news of all time. <laughs> That's their foreshadowing. <laughs> Those are actually, the, somebody wrote that in the script and said, yep, nailed it. And they call him the world's number one ranked Religious scholar. Yeah, they what? rank. How do they rank those guys? What? What it's would that like be? Chess. Like American you, you gladiators. I watch down, and then you both religious question back and forth. You get a bracket. You get an elo, and then yeah, exactly. There's an U.S. elo, and then an international the elo. Broad it's jump. A whole thing. Yeah. Oh damn it! If only I knew a Jewish month, I could make a March Madness joke, but I don't. Chamsach. <laughs> <laughs> Prove that's not a month. Prove that's <laughs> not a month. Chamsach madness. Say it's not. I'm a Jew. It's anti-Semitic. <laughs> Check your non-Jewish privilege. <laughs> Everything yeah. I say is right because I'm talking about my own people. There you go. Yeah. I, <laughs> like, I like how they just made this a thing. Like, it's not a real thing. There is no number one religious scholar in the world. No. But they were just like, we're going to make this for the movie and everybody's going to fucking take it and believe it. <laughs> so we cut to a news conference where uh, the Antichrist, who looks like gay Jeremy Irons, <laughs> is being asked by... The world yes. to be the president 
of the world. Yes, and thrice <laughs> he turns down the crown of laurels that... Yeah, and the IMF, they're trying to talk this guy into making a single global currency yes. also. Uh, apparently countries won't do that unless the, the Antichrist holds the the big bag of money or, or whatever, and that's definitely not how... How money works. And they're like, all right, we'll have him administer the bag of money. No, still wrong. Uh, better. There's no bag of money. That's not how it works. But that's why we, we'll, we'll just go. <laughs> and well, wait, before we create a universal currency, who's going to be the president? <laughs> right. that's, that's the fucking cra- Well, we can't form a company unless we know who the king is. Right. <laughs> Was this guy, was the Antichrist guy in the first one? Yeah, he yes. was, he was oh, okay. promoted to general, uh, or to secretary general of the, uh, of the UN in the last one. Oh, okay, cause he just seems, in this movie, it just seems like everybody's like, hey, you, you have an evil accent, do you want to be president of the world? <laughs> Why, of course I would like to take over the world because I'm the Antichrist. Oh, yes, yes, that is what happened. It, uh, you, okay, it, that it, that you don't what, shed okay, any new light on it by watching the first one. That happened as well in the first one. <laughs> Yeah, it's not like he did anything in the first movie that would clue you in as to why Pakistan and India now want to be ruled by the same people and be part of the same country. <laughs> right. Doesn't explain why that. No, it's just like Obama why. did. Same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Of course. That's why they made him look that way in the history. <laughs> <laughs> and and now that, um, of course, he's president of the solar system or whatever, he stands up and he says, basically, as my first act as president of the world, I would like to do away with religion. Now don't don't get me wrong. You've got my vote now. Yeah, it's a small cheer from Georgia and upstate New York. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Antichrist. One of the things that's really interesting about this movie that that you come to realize is there's still like skeptics and atheists in the world of Left Behind, even though there's been um the rapture. rapture. Yes. And what I realized is the reason why that they, this movie still contains skeptics and atheists is because they think today there's just as much evidence. Like the reason why everyone thinks that it could be radiation is because <laughs> can't you see the sunset? There must be a God. <laughs> and that's exactly the same to them as everyone getting sucked up into heaven. <laughs> I think Sam Harris and Dawkins would still be there going, I don't know, guys. I know it matches your book exactly, but I'm not sure. Maybe radiation. It's that same sort of like, well, atheists won't believe no matter what. What you give them, am I right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, just a theme the throughout. The amount yeah. of them trying to convince people, like, I like how they show people, like, is this what you're thinking, audience? Well, let's show you with these characters and then change their minds. <laughs> That's how it works. Oh, God, it's so fucking brutal. They just beat you about the head with it. So then we, we cut from there to the uh, to the meeting where they're strategizing. And the strategy, so the strategy is taking place... The the black preacher character who we met in the first movie, for those who didn't see the first movie, there's a black preacher who didn't get brought up to heaven, but now he's a Christian again? Oh, he was something? a Christian then. He just wasn't Christian enough. He yeah, now looked he's at a Christian woman enough. with lust in his eyes and therefore committed adultery or something along those lines. So basically their plan with the preacher guy and – um uh, you know, carbohydrate version of the girl from the last movie <laughs> is we can't stop the Antichrist. So what do we do? Try to stop the Antichrist. That's pretty much <laughs> right. it. Yes. Yeah, like, we, can't, Listen, we can't do anything. The Bible says none of us are in the Bible. We're going to so. fail. <laughs> so we have to try. <laughs> At which point we get, and now this is, this is a promise made. This is a Chekhovian gun, which you're so glad gets fired. Kirk then pulls out a picture, or someone pulls out a picture of fire-breathing Jews yes. holding a menorah, <laughs> and says, "These are the witnesses, and the witnesses will stand by the wailing wall and speak the truth, and they'll defend themselves with fire." And I thought to myself, "Oh my God, if you exist, please, please, please let there be fire-breathing Jews <laughs> holding a menorah in this movie." I was right. The same shit down. I'm like, now, if there's fire-breathing Jews, it will all be worthwhile. <laughs> so their plan, so they make their plan, the plan is basically for Kirk to go to the Wailing Wall and find the fire-breathing Jews, and for Snake Tooth Knife Dick to be a pilot. <laughs> but of course, a guy who dresses like a pilot, even when he's not a pilot, and wore his pilot costume throughout the entire first movie, when they're like, hey, pilot, you should be a pilot. He's like, no, go for right. it. <laughs> I'm not going to be a pilot. 
What I what I liked about this part is when I realized what they were trying to do with Kirk's character because I was like, Buck Williams is so weird. And speaking to earlier, he, all of his clothes are oversized. Everything he's wearing is just two times bigger. And he's got this brown leather jacket that is zipped up all the way and two times bigger than he is. <laughs> and I realized, oh, they're trying to make him the J- Jesus Indiana Jones. Yes. He's trying uh-huh. to be Indiana Jones of like, this is what I got to do. But I like how it's like, you can't have your shirt open and you can't have your jacket unzipped because that's too controversial. <laughs> Zip it up all the way and show us that you're Indiana Jones... The Christ version. He's a, he's a nice, clean cut in yeah, yeah, exactly. Jones. All Without all that yeah. not shaving thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just have in my notes, Snake Tooth Knife Dick is the Kim Davis of pilots. <laughs> just, his conscience won't let him drive around the Antichrist. <laughs> I also want to point out that uh, when Kirk walks in, uh, he... he Totally disses Chloe. Chloe goes, uh, hey, Buck Williams. And then he just walks right by her. This will also not be important later. I just. Now, Chloe is the girl who from the first movie was kind of hot, but then she got trapped in a bread factory for 40 days and 40 <laughs> nights before the second movie, right? Yes, that was her. Listen, I'm not what you would call slim, but whatever, whatever diet Chloe went on, I don't know if she went off Atkins or something <laughs> in between these two movies, but Chloe Bear, Need to get back on it. She went crazy on that body of the Christ is what happened. <laughs> <It's> exactly. <laughs> oh, wafers. communion wafers. <laughs> nom, nom. Those are Nilla wafers. Wafers are wafers. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. She's the, and she's the sister of, of, of Monster Man Mike, right? Uh, the pilot guy, right? Their she's her daughter. That's his daughter? That's his daughter. That's right. I got so confused because I was like, how is that his daughter? And then her and Kirk have this thing going on. Her yeah. and Buck. But I was like, you're... I would be like, hey, that's my daughter, dude, and you're the same age that I am, and you're hitting on my daughter. <laughs> but n- it's never addressed. It's just like, yeah, go for it, man. No, Knock these are Christians. Up. You can fucking Yeah, no, I was oh, just saying, I yeah, was like, expecting like, any moment for him to like start negotiating how many goats and fucking heifers it was going to take to get her pussy, you know? Uh, and so as soon as they finish making their plan, a burned fireman comes in, which I felt was kind of ironic. Like, I didn't know if they were just <laughs> like... But I did say out loud to the screen, I guess you could say that that fireman wasn't... Fireproof. <laughs> 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 this is Kirk Cameron's other movie, guys. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's burned. I, I can, yeah. I can see them writing the script and being like, you know what we need? We need a fireman who was on fire. That'll show all those atheists. <laughs> That'll prove to them what God can do. The first draft had a waterman who's on water. water yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk, no, that's guys, not a thing. Is, Ray Comfort a says it is. <laughs> And and the reason that we have to have the fireman, by the way, is so that Chloe can like turn away from him and be going, "Ew, dying person, ew," and 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 wander off so that later she can like overcome that. I guess later with the help she can of Jesus, Jesus, the Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, yeah right. exactly, exactly. So this is so now we have the moment where he goes back to his office, and again we talked about this a little before. He is supposed to be a major celebrity, someone who murderous, uh, you know, Nietzschean nihilistic cops in the middle of their murder spree <laughs> stop and ask for an autograph yes um but he goes back to his office and then he's working on a story there or something he's doing something mm-hmm. at the office and he gets surprised by a person who we have never seen before now look if you just tuned in for this episode and this movie you'd be like man guys you did a bad job explaining this movie <laughs> who's that girl we don't fucking know no. this movie appears not to know because we don't find out until about 10 minutes before the end who the fuck this person is she just walks in with a backpack she's like hey buck what's up and he's like hey character who i totally know oh yeah i know yeah it was she just randomly shows up and it's just like yeah you're gonna be part of this now it's like yeah i am i'm not gonna tell you who i am you, we don't need to. Don't worry. We don't need to know who you are. Well, we we now we did talk about her quite a bit in the last movie. It's just that now she doesn't have some crazy shit on her forehead. Is yeah, that Scarface girl? Yes, exactly. that's the ta- that's forehead girl. They don't talk about Scarface. That's Scarface girl, and they don't talk about what the fuck happened to her forehead. That's forehead girl. Yeah. yeah no, she's not a lesbian anymore. So the forehead thing went away, and now she's exactly, gonna be a Christian. Exactly. Exactly. Fuck it happened. Just, it no, washes that's off. Not how it works. Uh, so that that's means science. that means that in the last movie, that thing on her head was an accident. That was the mark of the lesbian. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah, a real thing. 
I didn't just yeah. make that up. Yeah. But so I want to get back to this. So again, he's a celebrity who people stop in the street. Hey, it's Buck Williams, most famous reporter in the world. The Antichrist wants him to be his representative. That's how important he is. Yes. But then a floor manager comes out <laughs> and she's like, mm, you don't just get to use the computer, Buck Williams. It's you, what you, the, the image you have to have is just some woman who we have never met and never meet again comes out and tells Walter, Walter Cronkite, like, listen, Mr. Cronkite, you will use the cop when it is your turn to read the copier. <laughs> All right? We keep running out of toner, and I think it's because people are making personal copies. I'm going to disappear, and my presence will never be exposed. No, she was just there because yeah, the movie no. didn't have enough I run these six cubicles. Don't fuck with me. I'm a serious character in this movie that will never come back. No. And then we cut to the church where the preacher is giving a absolutely crazy sermon. So slash PowerPoint presentation, yes. Yes, with a, with a slideshow, and I just have in my notes, oh, a slideshow, neat. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down exposition via 1980s PowerPoint with somebody standing in front of the projector. Right. Good it's, job. It's like the world's worst TED Talk, because he, he keeps <laughs> going to his audience with questions. He keeps being like, how many of you here have heard of the tribulation? And of 90% of the audience raises there and he's like, good, good, good. A lot of people Excellent. knew. And who yeah. can tell me? <laughs> he's like one of those interactive teachers. Like if he psyched himself outside the classroom, I have to reach these Christians. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's a great moment. I've, I want this more than anything to have been improvised. In the middle of his sermon, and apropos of almost nothing, yes. a woman stands up and goes, is he going to kill us all? That's my ringtone yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> at which point he's like oh yeah yeah no he's gonna come after all of the christians why go fuck yourself that's, that's and i love there's one character who by the way we have never met have we met chris no, before? no i don't think so okay not at all good because i don't know maybe chris is just someone with a different face because apparently spiral tattoo girl can just rip the major defining <laughs> thing off of her body and be that character and i'm supposed to know <laughs> <laughs> so one guy, Chris, who's sitting in the front, listens to this like someone's describing scat porn. <laughs> he's just like, oh, oh, the entire time he's talking. And so Chris just leaves because good for him, by the way. Good for you, yeah, Chris. Right. But who is Chris? Go fuck yourself. Again, we have no idea who this character is. Everyone just talks to him like we're supposed to realize who he yeah, is. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then he wanders out of the church, and I, I want to mention this, too, because outside of the church, we saw this in the first movie, outside of the church was just a regular neighborhood. It's been a week since the rapture, and now there are, like, tires and fucking homeless people laying in the trash can. There's actually a fucking barrel fire going in the background, and people huddled around it, warming themselves. I'm like, how does hundreds of millions of people disappearing from the earth increase homelessness? Right, exactly. You think there would be more, not less you, I mean, of, oh, There's not a lot of silver linings in all the babies dying and shit, but I mean, at the very least, homelessness and unemployment go down, right? Yeah, a little bit less yeah, traffic, never more parking. Baby on your plane yeah. anymore. Oh, That's also yeah. nice. Babies yeah. R Us closes down. <laughs> Women don't talk to you about their children's food allergies anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, listen, there's lots of positive sides of all the babies disappearing. I don't want to come out of the gate saying that there's no plus sides to all the babies disappearing. My Facebook feed doesn't have those photos anymore. Uh, right, right. <laughs> I mean, and this is kind so of off cute. subject, but I think it's kind of important to explore. Like, they never say in the movie that people... This isn't children of men. People haven't lost the ability to have children. So, like, if you imagine this world where, like, all the babies disappear, all the annoying Christian people disappear, there's one country with one currency, no war, uh, no famine, and no nuclear war, and we can just start having babies again? This is an awesome situation. If it wasn't for, you know, Kurt Cameron and his boys fucking it up, I would be loving the tribulation. Yeah, exactly. There's a baby born every three seconds on the planet, and yet every, apparently everyone stopped reproducing. I guess. Maybe the fetuses were raptured, too. Yeah, yeah well, they what, are babies. I was wondering, like, pregnant women, were they just like, nope, it's not there anymore? Or, like, do they have the baby, and then and then it just disappears? And they're just right. like, they just... <laughs> like, it's oh, a, they no, got them again. I don't know. I, no. didn't see the, I didn't see the genitals in time. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I would pay anything for there to be a shot of a Lamaze class where there, everyone just slowly deflates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I feel better. 
<laughs> you guys this were breathing great. wrong or this something. Is a, this, <laughs> oh, it was just gas the whole time. I, guess. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Why did I take up extra shifts at TGI Fridays? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know my baby was raptured on TLC. Um, I, I gotta say, I love this point, though, where that guy, Chris, uh, who later will play spin the bottle with a gun, yes. uh, goes, <laughs> and then they're, they, this is their moment of, like, is this how you feel, audience? Are you oh. not sure about this? Well, let's talk to you. And then it's Kirk, like, coming in. I love the way he's, like, he's, like, the way he tries to convince him and the questions he asks him and how serious he gets in his face is hilarious. Because yes. this is Kirk, like, I'm going to be a hero right now. I'm going to show you what the power of God can do <laughs> yeah. if you just talk it out. So this is another thing that we need to point out. The the pop-out interview that Kirk does to Chris is word for word the pop-out interview that Ray Comfort does on people in all of his documentaries. <laughs> yes. Just like- so if you want to see the beginning influences of Ray Comfort on Kirk Cameron... Here it is. This is Ray Comfort, who, for those who don't know, is, I want you to take the craziest person you can possibly imagine, great? Multiply that by a hundred, give it an Australian accent, and make it about Jesus. That's Ray Comfort. New, New Zealand He made accent. the movie Audacity. Look it up. It's amazing. Look up Banana Man on YouTube. Yes. You'll never regret it. <laughs> Banana Man. Right. That's all you need to know about Ray Comfort. But basically... The interview goes something like this. And Noah, if I may, can I, can I reenact this interview oh, with you? Absolutely, absolutely. I'll be okay, Chris. I, sure, sure. Hey, Chris, you're a terrible person. I, I don't think I'm a terrible person. Oh yeah? Well, did you ever steal anything? Y- yeah, but I'm just a normal human that like was a kid once and wanted a, a porno magazine. Did you ever look at a lady and want to fuck her? Uh, yeah, I'm doing that right now. Jesus said that looking at a lady is the same as fucking a lady. I don't think it is, but Jesus never fucked anybody as far as we know, so I can see how he got confused. You're a Christian. (laughs) (laughs) That was it. And again, this is... The no one in this movie reacts the way that Noah did. Everyone in this movie is like, oh, I never oh, thought yeah, of that well, before. Geez. Looking at a sandwich is the same as eating a sandwich. <laughs> That's why I'm never hungry. Yeah, they- we should just bring people in Ghana pictures of food. <laughs> yeah, that, him, him convincing him that like any, and it's like the audience, like, have you ever done any tiny little thing that's bad? Well, you're going to hell then, unless you accept Jesus. That was it. Like him just trying to convince him. He's like, "Yeah, I stole some candy one time." Well, you're going to hell then. <laughs> well, I don't understand. Why is that like the same? It's like killing someone because that's what Jesus believes. All right, I guess I should be a Christian. <laughs> yes, did right. it. And and I just but but I love like uh, so Theo the 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 black preacher guy from the last movie. He has this little crazy TED Talk Jesus rant going, and everyone in the movie is reacting like how you should if somebody starts like going on about how the fucking UN is the Antichrist and shit. They walk the fuck out, but this movie treats it like, you know, you're supposed to be sitting there going, oh, all those souls, they're just going to have to burn for eternity now. In the universe of this movie, that is a stupid decision. Well, Everyone yeah. just vanished off the planet. <laughs> You're, the same level of skepticism no longer applies. We just got introduced to some really big evidence. Right. Now everyone, now everyone should be like, yeah, no, I mean, I get it. Antichrists are probably real because everyone just got voiped off the fucking planet. I'm with you. I'm listening. I'm open. Yeah, show me some fire breathing Jews and suddenly I'm on your side. Right. And then that's the point I was trying to make earlier is that to them, like the sunset and right. the Bible are as good evidence as fire breathing Jews. <laughs> and we would be skeptical. Like I would see those fire breathing Jews and be like, all right, next week on the game cast, I guess they must have something hidden in their cheeks. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, like I just fucking don't look at the world around. Me. I, Nothing can fall in my apartment without me being like, maybe it's a ghost. So I don't. I, it's, I am not a person who would not be convinced by fire breathing Jews. <laughs> Next week's episode would be fire breathing Jews. Those are real, definitely real. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like that's what you lead with. That's yeah, what you come right. strong, not like sunsets. Be like, oh yeah, and then like some guys like, wait, there's fire breathing Jews. Like, oh yeah, that's a thing also. Uh, I want to know more about that. <laughs> no, but you're a murderer because you thought about murder. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> true. 
So then, yeah, Steel Blade Crunchberry <laughs> goes to a candlelight vigil, which just a, a highlight of this candlelight vigil. One man has brought a giant crucifix to the yes. candlelight vigil. <laughs> he's just brought a giant, and he gets a <laughs> phone call. Uh, and while while he's getting that phone call, a lady in white comes up, and she's like, "You must have lost someone too." And I'm very, I wrote in my notes, lady in white wants to fuck. That's very clearly what she's doing, right? Oh, That's yeah. what you do. You walk up to someone at a vigil and you're like, oh, so sad. So like, you want to grab a drink or? <laughs> you want to just go to my place? Yeah, everyone knows what funeral sex looks like. Swipe right. <laughs> when you say, when you say lady in white, I don't want anyone to be left with the impression that she's like in a beautiful white gown or anything. She's in 1950s, like, overall undies or whatever. If she turned around and there was like a hatch on the ass of her outfit, I would not have been surprised. Yeah, she's wearing magic Mormon underwear. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> As outside clothes. And of course, the phone call he gets is from Chris, Chris. who I'm yeah. sure you'll remember because he was a person that was in the movie and he needs help, apparently. Now, I want to point out here that we haven't talked about Chris's physical appearance. <laughs> Chris looks like he's the god of Down syndrome. <laughs> if you told me that all of the vampires from Buffy the Vampire Slayer were based on Chris, I'd be like, <laughs> oh, I get it. If Chris were a superhero, his name would be Manpeg. This is, Chris is not an attractive I, human. When, I want to when it first cut to the scene of him spinning the gun on the table, I wrote down suicide. So easy, a caveman can do it. <laughs> He is a goon. Right. So then Chris and um, Blam Steel, Christ Wreck, um, have basically have your basic, do you think the sunset happened by chance conversation? Yes, uh-huh. At which point, when Chris points the gun at himself, he points it at his heart? You're right. He points it at his chest? No, dude, that's which, not... That's how you do that. Which I thought was weird, but then I realized his forehead is so low and so thick, it's probably <laughs> bulletproof. Yeah. He probably went with his heart just because he's tried to shoot himself in the head three times. <laughs> and the bullet's just, Ping! I did this. It doesn't work. Trust me. I, I love that he's spinning the gun when he comes in because it's like, it's a, it's like, it's like, what can be a way to show that this guy's about to kill himself? Like he's got the gun and he's spinning it, and if it lands on him, he's got to kiss that gun and shoot himself in the head. Like <laughs> it's the stupidest way to show this guy wants to commit suicide. Right. What happens if it doesn't land on him? Yeah. Who? There's no one else in the room. <laughs> Spin the bottle is who you kiss, not yeah. whether or not you kiss. <laughs> well, if it lands on me, I'll shoot me. If it lands on the lamp, I'll shoot the lamp. I, I, don't I, I know. think somebody I had think uh, Russian roulette explained to them like briefly or something like that, or they were drunk at the time and only exactly. remembered parts of it. I'm pretty been. sure they spin the gun. No, they spin the chamber of the gun. <laughs> right, the chamber, the gun. Well, if you spin the gun, the chamber's going around too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically this chamber. But, but so, and then this scene is just loaded with the worst of Christian apologetics. I was like, he's like, uh, uh, Rayford is saying like, uh, uh, but Chris, what if you're wrong? He actually says those words, those exact Pascal's wager words. What if you're wrong? And then he says, how can you prove there's no heaven? I'm expected. And why are there still monkeys? And check out this banana. And how did all those BC people know what year it was if there was no Jesus? Flagellum. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all, it's like William Lane Craig on the toilet is what this whole scene feels like. Just him being like, well, then how come the sunset and the dun, 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 divine command? It's just like, but none of them are whole. So he's having, he's having one of those painful Indian food shits. So he never finishes any of his thoughts. He's just like, oh, dun, dun. Oh, they said that didn't have butter in it, but I know it did. <laughs> uh, and of course, Chris, Chris uh, drops in this scene the God is dead Nietzsche bomb, which Christians, I love that the one zeitgeist that's gone through to Christians is that, that Nietzsche said God is dead. But what always tickles me so much about that is how little they understand about the point Nietzsche was making. Right. It's sort of <laughs> like if they were like, well, you know, in the middle of Harry Potter, he says "expecto patronum," so the whole book's in Latin. I mean, that's basically <laughs> the level of understanding of Nietzsche that happens. So they Pascal wager, and Chris decides to, and again, trade his gun in for God. Yes, <laughs> that's what he says. That's what Ray recommends. Yeah. He's like, trade that gun for God, Chris. S Steel shank ray gun. Change your gun in for God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Where's yeah. that Christian movie? I would like Stranger to s- Gun. And <laughs> I, would, I would like to see a store where it's like a you know gold for cash for gold, but it's yeah. just guns for God, and he just goes up, he just takes them over there, Chris over, and then he just hands it in, and they're just like, "Here's a cross, there yeah. you go. here's your Bible, gun for God." Now you're dead. And now we learn uh, a little bit more detail about the witnesses. These are the fire-breathing menorah Jews that this movie keeps teasing us with. Uh, but we end up back at the church here. Right. So there's two things I want to point out about the church scene. The first is Kirk brings up the idea that they got to get it on live TV because it turns out Vladimir Putin now controls all the television. Why? Because he's the president of the universe. Probably the same reason he controls all the currency. <laughs> right. Who the fuck knows? That's the answer. That's why he controls everything ever. Um, so they bring up to Theo, hey, we should do it live TV. And Theo acts like he has never heard of live TV before. Right. Like, live TV, I love it. Live TV. <laughs> Just the idea of it. Live TV. TV that goes on live. People will see it, and they can't not see it because it's happening live. <laughs> I would love for somebody to just be like, Theo, have you never seen Saturday Night Live? Saturday Night Live? What? What's a Saturday? You say that day after Sunday? No, no, that's a Monday. Yeah, I hate Mondays. Mondays. Just like Garfield. <laughs> All right, so just to make sure everybody's caught up on the on the plan and everything here. So what has happened now? They know that there are these secret fire-breathing Jew witnesses uh, at the Wailing Wall, and the Antichrist won't let anybody in. So now Kirk Cameron is going to team up with Steel Dick fucking Shark Wrestle and get on the Antichrist's plane and go to Jerusalem to film the fire-breathing Jews, put that out on live TV, and convince the entire world that Jesus— now, Chloe does not like this plan at all. No. Chloe does not want them to hang around the Antichrist. She is very upset about it and ha- and spends the rest of this movie having a mild snit over it. Yes. She actually <laughs> says the words. This is an actual line. I went back and wrote it down. I'm having a lot of trouble with this hanging out with the devil thing. Right. You know, just like women never want you to hang out with your fucking friends. God, you said it was okay if I went out. It was okay. I just, I was lonely, and I just want to know, like, why you always want to hang out with the devil instead of hanging out with me. I don't always want to hang out with the devil, babe. I just hadn't seen the devil in a while. Oh, I see. Well, you hadn't seen me in a while. Anyways, and it's like, are you going to be this way with our children? Chloe, God! Don't take my name in vain! (laughs) So, now we cut to the scene of uh, Steel Grip Headphone Jack um, trying to convince... The stewardess lady from the first movie. Now, again, if you didn't see the first movie, the stewardess lady in the first movie wanted to fuck herself some pilot. Yes. She wanted some pilot D. She wanted the vitamin. And so he basically shows up to the hangar where his presidential of the universe plane is, and he's like, I want to fly the plane. Yes. <laughs> that's that's how to you get that job. You walk into an active hangar if you want to become a <laughs> yeah, pilot, and yeah. you just ask that's a stewardess for a job. <laughs> yeah. And the stewardess is like, yeah, no problem. We're going to fly out it's right like now. A, it's like an equity open call. Everyone else is sitting out there being like, oh, man, fuck, I should have gotten my pilot card. He just gets to walk in there. <laughs> they don't let you use the hangar bathroom unless you're already an equity pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, he's wearing his pilot outfit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, he's, he's dressed for the job. It's yeah. nice. Now, the job you want. Now, this woman is – okay, in the last movie, she was a stewardess that got hired by the UN, but she hasn't been introduced at all in this film. So, you know, you're just kind of left out there all on your own. But basically, you can tell they had a relationship because he walks up and he's like, uh, hey, Hattie, can I – she turns away. He's like, well, Hattie, I'm sorry. She's just like, no, I'm over it. Look how over it I am. And fuck you. That's how over it I am. I'm so over it that fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, exactly. Radium Half-Life. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> so, uh, she, so she's like, hey, you wouldn't fuck me. You don't get this job. At which point he convinces her by going, listen, I'm a pilot. I deal in facts. Yes. <laughs> which is, I mean, yes, all people who have jobs that are things deal in facts. Pretty much everyone except <laughs> preachers have jobs that deal in facts. He could have been like, I'm a tow truck driver. I live in facts. <laughs> right. Yeah, you do, I guess. Your job is related to the physical universe. That is true. Well, and then she says, well, I don't know. I saw you with a Bible, and there's a lot of folks out there saying that my boss is the Antichrist, to which he basically says, oh, come on, Hattie. We've known each other a long time. If I ever accused anybody of being the Antichrist, you know, I'm not that kind of guy. And like goes, four oh, well, or five you know, times. You're not. You're, you're not, actually, now that I think about it. You're not a accused people of being the Antichrist kind of guy. No, you can have the job. You can, you can right. fly the plane. 
And then he turns to the camera and strokes his invisible beard. He's like, got her. <laughs> <laughs> I am a crazy person who thinks someone's the Antichrist. <laughs> By the way, he actually basically does that later on in the movie. I'll point it out when it happens. But he basically actually winks at the camera at one point. Oh, it's- I know exactly what point you're talking about. Yeah, I'll wink again. <laughs> <laughs> he, he literally does go like, gotcha. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Like a 1950s TV show would have gone, no, we got to retake that, yeah. dude. You, All of a sudden, he had a gold tooth for no reason. There. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I would love that he kept doing that. Like, can you please stop looking at the camera? Like, no, I think this is what I need to do. No <laughs> one tells <laughs> SteelBladeAudible.com what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking circles around his head like the end of a Lo- Looney Tunes <laughs> cartoon. That's Rayford. <laughs> Pilot. <laughs> So now we move back to the church where Chloe is, um, she's gone to talk to the preacher, and apparently she's gone to talk to him about whether or not it's okay with God if she fucks Buck Williams now that the rapture's happened or whatever. But she does it in the worst possible way because she clearly makes Theo think she wants to fuck him. At when least for a second. Comes in, yeah. She's like, Absolutely. she's like, uh, preacher man, um, I just wanted to know about Dick. Can you tell me right. about the cock. <laughs> right, relationships. And uh, God, who hasn't been in Theo's position where she's like, so I have a friend who like really wants to date someone she knows really well. And you're like, yeah, uh huh. Well, maybe that person would be open to it. So I should ask Buck out. Oh, yeah. Fuck, yes. That's, <laughs> oh, that's yeah, what I thought you meant. <laughs> I have this erection for a different reason. <laughs> I was just thinking about that dead kid from Syria. <laughs> that's why. Oh, boy, Theo. <laughs> and uh, right at the beginning of that scene, by the way, it's this weird moment. She walks in and the pastor goes, yeah, okay, uh, have a seat. I'll talk to you about that. And Chloe says, yeah, thanks, and awkwardly just remains standing and <laughs> yeah. keeps talking. And he's like, no, uh, please ser- have a seat. Seriously, Go sit down. <laughs> seriously, it's weird now. I'm going to sit down while we talk. And she kept standing. And it, it seemed like they had a fight about this, like the two actors before the thing. They're like, just don't do the thing where you stand up. And she did it again. And he was like <laughs> visibly pissed <laughs> that she did it. To be fair, in between these movies, when she ate her way from the front to the back of a hostess truck, she lost the use of her knees, and so that actress is literally unable to sit down. It's the diabetes, yeah. She's oh, amputated. I, 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 I figured, I figured it was, I figured it was more for the character that she's just so hungry for dick. She's like, I can't sit down. Right, now. <laughs> right, right, exactly. If I, I sit will down, orgasm. that chair will slide inside me. That's how wet I am. <laughs> that chair will be just dripping after I'm done with it. If I don't know. Someone will be like, oh, did you get in a water fight in your office? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm like Rand Paul. I'm wearing three sets of Depends just to hold in the goosh fest. <laughs> so apparently the pastor basically says it's okay to give him an over-the-pants handy. So she heads over to Buck's place with a mission. And when she gets there, of course, forehead lady with nothing on her forehead is there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right. And she... And forehead lady is wearing a ring. So what Co- what Chloe takes away from this is not he's sleeping with another woman, but he's engaged to another woman because what? there's a woman there in a bathrobe and she wears an engagement ring, which is a fucking crazy thing to think. Yes. That's basically like, oh, well, I don't understand why a lamp would be in his apartment if he doesn't own that lamp. That must be his lamp. <laughs> right. I saw shoes in his apartment. He has 95 pairs of shoes. Like, no, he's having a party. It is the crazy <laughs> weird thing that just like any woman who's in your home who's wearing an engagement ring must be your fiance. <laughs> I also want to point out that Chloe's fuck me dress and her uh, I kind of knew this person funeral dress are the same outfit. Yeah. She's just got the one. (laughs) Exactly. It's the only dress she fits in after (laughs) what happened in between movie one and movie two. It's it's the only dress that hasn't been completely soaked by her bad shoes. (laughs) Every day in between these two movies was a cheat day. (laughs) (laughs) So Ivy cock blocks Chloe and then we uh, then we move back to the house so that we can get in the middle of the antichrist is about to destroy the world or whatever we can get i I, he was at a girl at his apartment level drama because what we needed you know what we needed to add to this movie about the antichrist was some family drama oh yes some some christian relationship drama where nothing's at stake because no one's so much as fucking held hands (laughs) (laughs) i feel so betrayed why you have a less intimate relationship than Steel Blade Christ Yeah, right? 
Well, and I love that they have to go with the he's engaged thing because they can't say, like, fucking some slut in this movie. They can't even imply that he must be fucking somebody. So sure. they have to say engaged. You know, it's like it, it, it's like it reminds me of my uh, high school biology teacher that would say stuff like, so if a black cat married a white cat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you guys all had my old biology teacher, that's way funnier. If you guys had my high school biology teacher, the but... white cat's parents would say how well spoken the black cat. Is. <laughs> <laughs> A class act of a cat. The, the white cat's grandmother would freak out. <laughs> and then talk about how she voted for Obama. I don't, I don't understand the metaphor. Meow, meow, meow. I, I know, I, yeah, I love that she's this thing, like, she wants to go fuck, fuck, and then, uh, and then she's like, oh, you're in a committed relationship with somebody? How dare you? Yep. Now I hate you. And then it's just so easily fixed, cause he just, Kirk Cameron just comes out and goes, what? No, that's my friend Ivy. What are you talking about? She goes, oh, never mind. Let's go fuck. And also, basically, look, again, it's been a week. These characters met seven days ago, and Kirk is saying, hey, can I come over and fuck your daughter? And he's like, yeah, I'll, t- I'll do what I can. I'll try to help <laughs> oh, you out yeah, with that. Ex- exactly. Raytheon drone strike is phone brokering <laughs> sex between his daughter and Kirk Cameron. He, he is so on board for those two to fuck. He's like, please have sex with my daughter, Buck Williams. <laughs> yes. Please. I want you to become fuck Williams and show how it's done. <laughs> I just want to fuck you vicariously through my daughters. Yeah. Any chance? I can't be gay now because of the whole God thing, but if you could fuck her, then it would be like me fucking you. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> but before he, gets, before he can go over and clear up this bullshit rejected threes company fucking script of a misunderstanding, the Antichrist slash president of Earth drops in on him and shows up at the roof of his apartment. Right, and the way that he gets him up there is they reverse the elevator. Like, how does that staff meeting go? So, like, guys, here's my plan. Like, we we reverse the elevator, so he'll push floor, but then he goes up to the penthouse and he's going to be like, what, what? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know. That seems like a lot of work. Can we just wait for him in the lobby and walk him upstairs? No, I want him to. I want the elevator to go the opposite way of where he pushes the buttons. Come on. Well, I feel like that's Fine. supposed to be some intimidating thing, like, like, oh, I control the elevators, which anybody can simply hack into, but, like, it would have been way scarier if he just showed up in his apartment and was just there and was like, hey, what's up? I want you to work for me. But it's like, I want you to come to the roof and I'm going to use this elevator and have it go backwards. And then I'm going to be waiting for you on the roof and because yeah. I've been there. I've been here for like a couple of hours. <laughs> right? for you. Yeah, this was a huge, <laughs> this is a this huge, is a huge inconvenience. I'm, I watched you. I'm really hungry. We've been listening to you take a shit and <laughs> you watched all of Swept Away and we just... I just stood up here on this cold up here. Yeah, and Fuck, that's I'm the other thing, too, suit. is it's not, not like this was a scheduled trip. They didn't get him on the way to work or anything. So if he didn't decide to leave his house that evening, he was just stuck there till morning, I guess. He learned how to wait for people and the same people as the assassin from the first movie. He just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, right, I guess right. this is where I am now. <laughs> so they go upstairs and Nazi Ted Danson basically <laughs> decides that's the Antichrist. Basically has a breakup conversation with Buck where he's like, Buck, I haven't heard from you lately. Yeah, so I have like, oh, oh, so busy with work and, you know, like, my, i so busy. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> like, literally, they're having a breakup and then, and then he's like, no, I mean, I guess if the UN controls the media, we could still, like, hang out and stuff. We can, we can news flicks and chill. <laughs> well, yeah, the Antichrist is very needy, I gotta say. <laughs> he is very... He's like, I would have been like, if I was Buck Williams, I'd be like, did you just reverse an elevator to get me up here? Like, <laughs> just call me. I, yeah, just call me next time or something. Like, I can't do this. I can't keep doing this. You got you to gotta respect the boundaries, bro. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I love, I love that Buck's demands for whether or not he can do it are very clearly, I want the ability to fuck you over. Yeah. He's just like, okay, well, if I'm going to work for you, I want a switch that cuts off all of your control in case I do something to fuck you over, which I would never do. I would never yeah. do that. And the, the Antichrist is like, sure, yeah, why not? What's funny is that this Antichrist the whole time, because Kirk Cameron and and Pilot McAdventure Man <laughs> keep, like, thwarting the Antichrist and doing all the secret stuff, and they keep making it seem like the Antichrist is super all-powerful. I keep being like, oh, he's going to know something's up, or he's going to know that Buck is doing something secret, or that's why he keeps finding Buck. No, he has no fucking clue what they're no. doing. He completely trusts Buck. And I'm like, you're so all-powerful Antichrist, and this journalist guy is just fucking you over, and you have no idea. 
Yeah, the suspense of this movie is, is the Antichrist ever going to find out anything that anyone does? And <laughs> Don't worry, nothing that anyone in this movie does. Even though the Antichrist constantly talks to people like he knows, yeah. we learn that that's just a space affectation. Yes. He must go up to waiters <laughs> at the restaurants. I think I'll have the soup. <laughs> yeah. Assuming that it's not... Actually, poison. It's, it's not. It's not poison. I'll just bring you the soup. Actually, All so right. funny enough, we, we don't have soup here. Uh, we don't. We don't. Serve oh soup. no, soup here, huh? No, that's that's one. You're thing sure you didn't steal the soup? <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We didn't steal the. I don't. I'm sorry. We don't. Uh, Very well, my friend. I feel like we do have soup because you're so res- you're so assured of it. <laughs> maybe we, I know for a fact we don't have any. Maybe check check in the kitchen again. All right, I'll go check. No, no, there's still no soup back oh, there. Oh, okay, my friend, I trust you. I know that you would never lie to me. Where did the spoon come Now, from? if you could do that exact same thing, only like uh, try to sound like a Prussian noble pretending to be Chechenian, you've nailed yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so, of course, when the whole fucking Antichrist showing up on the roof thing happened, important shit was going on in this movie. We were about to go over and clear things up with Chloe, so quickly we get back to that. You know, we wouldn't want the plot to fucking uh, fall right. apart here or anything. Right. And and this is the point where – I mentioned this briefly earlier before, but this is the point where basically Chloe calls upstairs, Dad, there's a man here who won't leave me alone, and Grenade Fireclaw is like, it's okay. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I'm in the shower. He really wants his daughter to get fucked. That's he why. wants his He's daughter like, to get fucked. He's like, you need fucked. it. Just shut up and take it. Yeah. At which point she gives Buck nine minutes. She goes, you have nine minutes. <laughs> right. Why? Who the fuck knows? This movie loves assigning seven years of peace and nine minutes to convince your <laughs> girlfriend to let you in the house. Who knows? And I, I wrote down in my notes, it's a good thing a guy didn't answer the door. Otherwise, she would have been like, Dad, Buck is gay. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Some my guy's f- telling off. He's like, "You're engaged to a man." <laughs> oh, no. the, his dog runs to the door. Oh my god! Jackie Buck's been fucking animals. <laughs> Do you think whoever answers someone's door is who they fuck? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works, right? That's why I've been fucking grenade fire clubs. <laughs> Oh my god, do I not have to do that to answer the door? Dad! I'm in the shower, can't hear you. Can't hear you. But the answer's yes, so keep fucking me. So then we go to Nikolai, and the Antichrist at this point has started dressing like a Dementor, which I approve of. Um, he dresses like a Death Eater. Um, He's also just switched accents. Up. He's now a Transylvania carnival barker. Right, exactly. <laughs> he talks about how thousands of people have flacked to the wall, and so he needs to create one religion of tolerance, harmony, and peace. Again, that's the villain's plan in this yes. movie. To create a religion of tolerance, harmony, and peace. And then he points to a televangelist preacher. The best possible example of the harms that religion do. And he goes, how does this create harmony? And turns it off. And we're like, that's a great fucking point. Yes. That doesn't create. <laughs> I wanted him to turn on the volume and the guy to just be like, all those faggots trying to get married. <laughs> <laughs> they eat each other's poo-poo, doo-doo, poo-poo. They eat doo-doo They got feces. season in the latte. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. Yeah, that goes on. And then he just looks and he goes, this is what I'm trying to get rid of. And then Kirk Cameron just is like, never. Listen, if someone's out there and can recut that clip so that it cuts to a clip oh, of the Pastor Juju Manning. Feces latte guy, yeah, yeah, Pastor, Pastor Manning. Manning in New York City, I will knit you a fucking sweater because I will watch that each night and giggle myself the fuck to sleep. Oh, shit. So then they have their uh, airport. We'll always have Sheboygan moment, and we're off to the to the plane where fucking steel dick. Shark Cage is, is going to fly him to Jerusalem. Right. And the plane in this movie is has so clearly been used before and after to shoot porn on. Yes. That they can barely... <laughs> there's still cum dripping down the windows you know, <laughs> of this plane. It's just like everything's got circular beds that turn in circles. And it's like, this is the meeting room. There are panties on that wall. It's, guys, yeah. we said we would take all the panties before Kirk got here. Now he's crying in his trailer. <laughs> I saw the devil's lace. I saw the devil's lace. <laughs> Shit. And also, this is the part where Laser Blade Grenade Shaw decides to go, like, rooting around on the airplane to see if he can find clues. 
Right, but he's sneaking around the plane like he's not allowed to be on the plane. He's the pilot. Yes. If anyone walked in anywhere on the plane and was like, what are you doing here? He'd be like, oh, I'm the fucking pilot. I am allowed to be anywhere on the plane because I am the pilot. I could walk into the middle of that room and be like, hey, guys, I'm the pilot. Just check in to go fuck yourself because I'm the pilot. Yeah, he but instead, so nervous and suspicious throughout that whole time. And I know he's doing something he shouldn't. But I'm like, dude, you got to have a little more confidence. So they're going to know. And again, I was like, oh, the Antichrist knows something's up. That's why I signed up. No, no, no fucking clue. Nope. No. The Antichrist has no idea what's going on. He just talks to everybody like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But this guy's walking around like that one guy you're smoking a joint with in the park that you think to yourself, wow, I should not have smoked a joint with this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you hear that? Is that a siren? Is that a siren? I don't know, man. Maybe it is a siren. They don't send sirens for us. <laughs> <laughs> Diving just, into the bushes. I don't bushes. know, man. Like, what if I ever want to work for the government? I don't know. Right now, we're smoking <laughs> pot in Washington Square Park. The chances don't look good for you working <laughs> in the government. <laughs> so, uh, so now we get, uh, and I just want this again, very minor point here, but while he's looking around for clues, again, that's all he's looking for. There's no fucking, they don't, there's not even like, they can't even think of a fucking MacGuffin that he can be trying to get. Yeah, it's like following footprints through the airplane. Yeah, exactly, no exactly, with a big fucking, uh, uh, magnifying glass or something like that. But he comes across this briefcase. <laughs> And he seems completely baffled is by this it. Rectangular. Oh, by what the by the brief by how to open a briefcase. <laughs> and he's at not all. Like, trying to figure out the combination here or anything. He's trying to figure out. It looks like he's trying to figure out what the fuck this thing is. Right? How briefcases operate. Yes. That is what. Yes. That is this character's journey. Is like, wait, is this a box? If this, the lid doesn't come off, but oh no, the back is sealed shut. What a terrible box this is. <laughs> the work of the devil. I see. <laughs> Do I tap it? But that one, two, three, shave and a haircut. Uh, that didn't work. And Kirk, of course, watches for him. He's like, "Don't worry, I'll keep watch while you try and open that briefcase." And he's like, "Oh, this is fucking impossible." So they just walk away. But don't worry because the Antichrist keeps all of his evil plans on his laptop, conveniently in the folder labeled "Evil World right. Domination." <laughs> <laughs> and he actually has that window open yeah. too. And he, you know, like I'm thinking, evil yeah. emails. Oh, perfect, perfect. He's got it right there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. like a- apparently the Antichrist's laptop is less protected than mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I know to close out the windows on my strangle porn, but the Antichrist <laughs> doesn't figure out to close out the windows on his evil <laughs> world domination plot. I think he'd surf for that incognito. <laughs> <laughs> And this is where the fucking uh, – now, okay, so he's copying – because they conveniently have disks sitting right next to the laptop with the evil plans Just on Just a him stack case... of GameCube blank CDRs. Exactly, yeah. exactly, like you do. He overwrote uh, D- Mario Double Dash. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, he just puts the CD in, and that immediately downloads the exact one email that he wanted yeah. onto that CD. That's how that works. Yes. You just, <laughs> That's you just how put he... it in. Discord. He forest gumped his way into getting those plans. He went in there, didn't know how to use a briefcase, found a computer, opened it up, found some blank disk, put it in there, and was like, hope this copies it. Copy. It works. Yay, the files are inside now. the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just starts hitting it. I gotta get it out. So, and just as he gets the CD out and closes it, the Antichrist walks out. And again, because he talks to everybody like they have a giant knife behind their back, they have this very weird interaction. But my favorite part is he goes, oh, I was just coming back to give you the ETA. And he goes, give it to me. And he has written it on a post-it note, whereas everywhere else in the world you just go, oh, we'll be landing at 4 p.m. Right. He's yeah. written 4 p.m. on a post-it note. And he's like, great. There it is. So is this 4 p.m.? Is that what I'm put to believe? Is, I'm, I'm, made, yes. I'm, made, I'm not holding this upside down. We're not going to reach no. it in uh, zero zero four <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I just want to make sure. No. Okay. <laughs> I felt like the pilot, yeah, uh, Steel was like, he was like, I, I have to have a reason why I'm walking around. I know. I'll write the ETA on a postcard, and if anybody asks me, I'm delivering this. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's what he uses. And I like that whole, like, give it to me. And then I was like, ooh, does he know something? He's like, the ETA. Give me the ETA. And he goes, oh, oh, yeah, sure. And then I love this moment. Uh, this is like what they use all their budget for, this yeah. special effect. Like, he, like, holds his hand. Yeah. And then... He this- turns into Kirstie Alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chloe turned into Kirstie Alley. Yeah. He no, turns yeah. into a ring wraith. Yeah. 
those black eyes and that evil face. There's like a flash of light, and then he becomes this evil look, and the and and he just has this confused look on his face, and he's like, "Is anything wrong? Did I become hideously ugly all oh, of a sudden?" The eyes just left your skull. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I hate it when that. Happens. I'm on Accutane right yeah, now. So. You know how that is. Yeah. <laughs> Allergies are a bitch this time of season. Sorry. <laughs> Now, obviously, we're all dying for something to happen in this fucking movie, and I hate to delay it even further, but we need to take a quick break before we move into Act 3. So first, let me give this the hard sell here. <clears throat> Will the Antichrist fulfill his nefarious plans of a well-fed and peaceful world? Will somebody finally fuck somebody? Will Ray Ninja Swordson have it with these motherfucking Antichrists on this motherfucking plane? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the habitudinous conclusion of Left Behind 2, Tribulation Force. Hello and welcome to Fox News. Turns out we were right all along. Ha ha. I'm the demon living in the skin of Megyn Kelly. Tonight, our final two presidential candidates take center stage for the first time. On one side is Senator Cranty Teist, broker of the Nuclear Disarmament Act, coordinator of the Hunger No More program, and the World Peace Agreement. On the other side is a Palestinian rabbi who doesn't know what germs are. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having us. I am the way and the light. Sure you are. So let's start with the issue on everybody's mind. Mr. Christ, this question is for you. Your father killed all the babies and good people in the world, which has pulled with a shocking 100% negativity with people still on the planet. Can you still lead this country? Thank you, Megan. Well, first off, I think it's only fair to point out that people have failed to look at the bright side of this. Shopping malls are much less crowded. No more crying babies on airplanes. Also, all of the Christians are gone, so there seems to be a lot less religious hatred. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Senator, your response? Well, uh, I respect my opponent, but if made president of this nation, I will not allow people and children to be murdered randomly according to age and belief. And that's something my opponent and I are just going to have to agree to disagree on, I guess. And apparently I have a southern accent now. I'm the son of God. Right, uh, remind me, uh, what he does about rape again? Gentlemen, 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 now, uh, uh calm down. Senator Cranty Teist, I-, I-, I should mention that there's been a fairly vocal minority led by your opponent in this country that has accused you of being the Antichrist. What do you have to say to that? Well, thank you, Megan, for the opportunity to discuss this. I- I'm glad we get to air this out once and for all. Listen, I have stated for the record again and again that I am not the Antichrist. But let's say I am for a second. Let's say my plan was to bring a thousand years of darkness and to rule the world, destroy all religion, and unite humanity while getting rid of famine and nuclear war. What would you rather have? The way he would run things? Or someone who happens to be the son of the fallen star? Because, hey, what am I going to do? Kill all the babies? That's a pretty good point. And finally, gentlemen, what do you think is your biggest weakness as a leader? We'll start with you, Senator Cranty Teist. Well, uh, I think that we have some differences. Uh, I like things the way I like them, and I won't bend on that. I, I will see a world of peace, even if it means ruffling a few feathers. I'm serious about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Jesus? I can't read. Ah, that'll be a problem, yeah. And despite the better judgment of everyone involved, we're back. When we last left our heroes, they were on their way to Jerusalem because they still had some establishing shots left over from the last movie. Now, at this point, Kirk and... Ray Bear Wrestler Fengsworth are hanging out in a hotel in a totally non-gay way, checking out the secret plans. So the bad guy's plans is to announce that Nikolai is the Messiah. Yes. And so what they found on the plans is basically the speech that they've given the world's most important Jewish scholar who defeated Bobby Fischer in the Jewish Scholar ELO tournament (laughs) is that he is going to announce that Nikolai is the Messiah. Yes, this is the biggest piece of news in the history of the world that we heard about earlier, yeah. And instead, they're going to try and convince him to announce that Jesus was the Messiah, a fact so boring, GNN would be burned <laughs> the to the ground. The rapture happened a week ago. This is the biggest piece of news in history, yeah. I, I feel like, too, like, for that plan, like, for them just to have some guy come out and be like, Nikolai's the Messiah, and everybody just go, <laughs> right. yep, that's right, you did it, you figured... Well, then that's absolutely got to be right, because this guy told us. And I love it, too, when they're reading these plans, and, like, they're reading it, and it's saying this stuff. And Kirk Cameron sort of has, like, a little kid tantrum about it. And it's just like, yeah. well, Jesus is the Messiah, not Nikolai. That's not right. How are they going to convince the Jewy man to yeah. see this? And he's the head of right, Jews, yeah, exactly. so apparently whatever he says, 
Something on Messiah's like that, right? that yeah. sticks. He's in charge he's of the Muslims king. too, in the sense that he's the number one religious scholar, and they they listen to him. Yeah. There are no Muslims in this movie. Oh no! Not I at mean, all. they're in fucking Jerusalem. No, there's, and there's no not Muslims a single in Jerusalem. Muslim that's anywhere. Not, that's not a place. Where not a single. Are I, I guarantee you, if someone watch, walked into the, if one of them wandered into the shots that they shot in Jerusalem, they just cut that film out and burned it. They were like, oh no, no. Yeah, like it was like an <laughs> airplane going on the background of Waterworld or something. Fuck, fuck, ruined another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now, so they, they, they plan in the hotel room and we cut to the church where the burned fireman from before is dying <laughs> and Chloe, who has just come from, you know, all you can eat lobster fest, <laughs> uh, uh, she's got cheddar bay biscuits in either hand still is, uh, basically like, can I read to you? And I wanted more than anything. And she holds up the Bible. Like, can I read to you from the Bible? And I wanted more than anything for him to just be like, no, no, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll just sit here feeling my burns, if that's all right. Because, you know, better. <laughs> right, and while he's while she's reading, Ivy, the formerly forehead chick, shows up. Um, and, of course, since she doesn't have any more shit on her forehead, she can now love Jesus correctly. Right, exactly. But they have a they have a perfectly reasonable conversation where Ivy just decides at the end not to deal with it. She's like, so you believe in magic? Which is, by the way, what I call religion all the time, so it gave mm. me a real giggle. And she goes, it's not magic, it's faith. Oh. A different word for magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you meet a girl who calls herself a witch, and you're like, oh, you're a witch? I'm a Wiccan. So you're a witch. <laughs> you just have a dumber word than I do. <laughs> <laughs> to which her response is platitude, 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 and Ivy uh. double birds it away. She's just like, okay, good luck with your Jesus shit. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was, this is another one of those moments where it's like, do you feel this way, audience? Do you feel like it's just magic? Yeah. If it's not, it's something much more than that. Like, that's them reaching out to us to be like, believe with us. Yeah. Faith See? is a choice. Yeah, exactly. I, I, but I love that that's the straw man that we get is that like somehow we don't want to believe. And it's right. not that we, we've been presented with the evidence and it's not heartbreaking that as a child this lie gets taken away. You know, it's, it's like, it's like when people find out about Santa, if we were like, well, do you want to believe in Santa? No, I mean, I it's just you can't anymore because I'm a grown up. Oh, really? Or is it just because you choose not to believe in Santa? No, it's because there's no fucking Santa. Right, right. What if I feel Santa in my heart? Have you ever looked at a sunset? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> When my grandma died, a rose grew on her grave. Yeah, they put rose seed in the soil so that stupid <laughs> people like you will see the flower and think it's magic. It's to cover up the smell of rot, which is actually happening to yes. grandma. <laughs> so then uh, a Buck goes to see the head Jew. Who is in ancient Israel. This yes, scene yes. takes place oh, in ancient... People are beating carpets and leading goats around in the background. Apparently, Jews all live in ancient Israel, not just Israel. Yeah, ancient yeah. Well, Israel. this is so that Kirk Cameron can look a little more Indiana Jones, a little more Christian yeah. Indiana Jonesy. That's definitely what this was for. Like, yeah. he's traveled all the way to Israel to take this guy down and talk to him. Ben Judah is his name, by the way, which is also a very interesting name. Yeah, it's not quite as bad what? as the, uh, what was the guy from the last the movie? Chaim Rosenswag. Yeah. Rosenswag. Chaim the Jew. Rosenswag. The, last Jew, the movie, the Jew in the last movie was called Chaim Rosenswag. This guy's named <laughs> Ben Judah. I assume in the third movie, his name will be Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish name. He's like Donald Trump. Jewish name, Jewish name, Jewish name. <laughs> I don't know, some of the Jewish name. <laughs> and a couple of things. First of all, the rabbi, who is the foremost scholar in the world, does not have a beard. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, the three gentlemen who he's sitting at the table with are not only do they have beards, they're davening, which is that rocking back and forth kind of praying that Jews do, but they do it when they pray. We don't just do it on autopilot. We're not, <laughs> Jews aren't autistic kids on the short bus. <laughs> We're not just always rocking back and forth. And if you watch this film, when he walks over, the Jews, who are not praying, are just like... Just That's how they communicate, back. right? What's wrong with your friend? Oh, he's really got a pee. <laughs> <laughs> they're like bees. They have a, a Jew dance that they do to communicate. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. 
I can right. totally see, like, the director, Kirk Cameron, really being like, yeah, that's what you all do, right? Just do that throughout the whole movie. Just keep doing that. That's a thing. That, oh, that no one who played a Jew in this movie was a Jew. <laughs> Nobody. They've never met a Jew. That's why their names are... If there was a Jew in this movie, they would have been like, oh, guys, just so you know, our names aren't Chaim Rosenswag and Judah Ben Judjud. <laughs> just just read the stage normal. directions. It says Jewishing. It says Jewishing. <laughs> just stick to the script. Asterisk. Jewishing asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they go to the Wailing Wall, and the the plan seems to be for brick stab guns to just be misdirection. But essentially, they walk over to the wall, and they're like, "Hey, you can't go here." Well, I I just want to point out that before this, Nikolai makes it very clear, and he says in several different scenes. That if anyone approaches the Wailing Wall, they'll be shot on sight. This is so well known that when Kirk calls Chloe later to tell him what they're about to do, she says, no, you can't do that because everybody who goes to the Wailing Wall will be shot on sight. Like, everyone knows this in the entire world except for Rabbi Ben Juju and uh, the, the fucking guards the that are guarding guards the fucking Wailing Wall that don't on shoot site. people on sight. That's right. <laughs> Shoot on sight means when you see them, not when they, not, it's not a game of red light, green light with a gun. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. You guys hold real still. That's what shoot on sight means. Uh, but this, this is one of my favorite moments is, is when Bear Trap Mantooth uses his Jedi powers (laughs) to, I, I, this is what I realized, like, oh, they want people to believe in Christianity and God because you'll get the ability to stop time. Whenever you right. Want to. right, exactly. Yes. And now <laughs> that is precisely what happens. With by the way, a Latino woman and a, a Negro spiritual. <laughs> right, exactly. The the woman from the Mormon underwear from earlier in the movie, who we never met and have no idea who she is, comes out of the woodwork, sings "Amazing Grace," and it stops time. And for those <laughs> who have listened to more than one of our episodes, this is the second movie. In which Christians have stopped time. Yes. <laughs> Just Zach Morris pops up, time out, yeah, and they walk past out. the guards. It, it, it worked perfect. She ca- she comes out of nowhere. She, well, he, first, he, I think he says, like, God, grant me strength. And uh-huh. then she appears and is like, sings to him. And then he just starts walking out. And then all the guys are like, no, 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 stop time. And it, I was just like, are you trying to get people to believe that if they give themselves to Christ that they'll have these powers eventually? That's what I, I feel like they're trying to promote. I guess, but yes, that's exactly what actually fucking happens in this fucking movie. Abs punch steel cock starts fucking walking and time <laughs> freezes because a black woman in magic underwear sang Amazing Grace, which I'm, I'm, I'm just so pissed that they went with that same cliche again. Like guys, how many fucking times have we watched a movie <laughs> and the last second the fucking guy summons a spiritual fucking angel woman to sing Amazing Grace to freeze time? Guys, Get a new blah, fucking blah, idea. Blah, yeah, exactly. Boat sinks, uh, Leo lives, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we finally get to the, the, the witnesses, right? This entire movie has been like about these two guys that are at the Wailing Wall that they're trying to get to. And when we get there, they're just two old dudes quoting Bible verses. Yep. Confucius and Moses just hanging out alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> They look like the Lord of the Ring dwarves. They and also, <laughs> the entire, the entire movie we've been set up that they're gonna speak this truth. They're gonna speak uh-huh. this wisdom. And they just quote John 3.16, the most yeah. platitude and common Jesus. It's a verse I knew before I had read the Bible. I was like, I don't know, there's one that they use at wrestling tournaments where people are like, <laughs> right, God. All the Christ annoying people have that, that on their That would have been great yeah. if one of the witnesses was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And <laughs> but instead they were Dalsam from fucking Street Fighter. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, there was a yoga flame, definitely. Yes. There were two, two right. distinct so we, yoga flames. Again, Throughout this film, we have been promised fire-breathing Jews. Yeah. And indeed, when the bad guys come to shoot them, they are bulletproof and literally breathe fire at the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> that is the which, level of crazy. <laughs> which causes them to immediately throw their guns on the ground. Yeah, because that's yeah, what happens when fire when comes towards fire. you. You yeah. just throw your assault yeah. rifle down and right, become engulfed in flame and of lie course. there. I wrote in my notes at this point, bulletproof, magical, dragon Jews just killed soldiers with fire breath. I give up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, gi- I love this movie. Yes. <laughs> so then um, 
the uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy's older sister <laughs> is just casually encouraging the fireman to die. Yes! But first, he has to apologize. First, he apologizes. He says a fireman who died saving people in a fire, and he has to ask God for, give, for forgiveness, mm-hmm. and then he dies. Well, and of course, Ivy showed back up because apparently she's always wanted to watch a man die. And and he looks up at Chloe and he basically has the most fucking anodyne I'm going to die moment. He's like, "Uh, pardon me, ma'am, but I'd like to die painlessly and without medication as burn victims so often do. I have exactly three minutes left. Any advice? Right, exactly. And her advice is apologize to the demon that killed you. (laughs) Yes! (laughs) At which point... When he dies, Ivy immediately is like, he was so happy. No, he wasn't. He was covered in burns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how Ivy compliments Chloe. Like, that was really good. You, you did such so a good. great you job. So oh my god, good at girl. other people dying. <laughs> uh, you really watched what? that guy die to the best of your ability. We watched the <laughs> shit out of that guy dying together. Yes, we did. <laughs> it's good yes, we did. You. This is a great scene. Did we cut? No. You made his dying breath be an apology to somebody that's not there. Yeah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Snuffleupagus, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> and now we cut over to the big announcement that we've been hearing about for this whole movie, where they're supposed to crown Nikolai Messiah, since he's already president of the universe. He, he, there's not a lot of titles you can take from there, but there's one, and he wants it, damn it. Right, and also... This, this is how badly planned out this movie is. Nikolai is in Israel, mm-hmm. and he goes, I regret I cannot be there. But he is there. Right. He's got to leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, they couldn't have delayed his schedule. The guy's supposed to be there in an hour to announce that he's the Messiah, and they couldn't rearrange his schedule so he could be there to be announced Messiah. <laughs> but they had to do that because he can't be there. Otherwise, he'd be like, no, it's me. So instead, he's just like, well... So there's a late lunch that I just could not push back. <laughs> well, now, so, to be fair, uh, though, uh, uh, Brian Williams' uh, uh, roof was open for a moment, and he had to talk with him in the next three days, so he has to yeah, exactly. wait on the roof there. <laughs> oh, but important when, shit. But when he goes up the upstairs, they're going to be downstairs. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> so he goes on his plane on the fuckmobile, and then... The announcement happens, and the Jewish guy gets up and he says, "I this is an international announcement, an international announcement on the identity of the Messiah. Yeah. Um, he goes, only one in a hundred million people fits these criteria. And right. I was like, so millions and millions and millions of people throughout history? <laughs> well, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds at the very least. But I, I, like I, the, the impression here is like he basically gets up there and he goes like, we have scientifically identified the Messiah. And the prophecies he's talking about are stuff like, this is one of the ones they actually mention, he will be impaled but not break a bone. Yeah, I kept trying to understand that. I was like, well, if you got impaled, unless you specifically impaled on someone's bone. Right? Broke it, you're not going to break a bone. That's a yeah, lot of people. No, what does that even fucking mean? I want to see some guy who was watching the broadcast sit at home eating potato chips, sit on his couch, and he's like, wait a minute. I've been impaled and never broken a bone. Wait Am I? Minute. I was born in Bethlehem. Wait a minute. <laughs> Am I, the I went to Egypt. <laughs> Well, and I love the light, the 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 uh, the guy right before he starts going into this impaled but didn't break a bone and went to Egypt once when he was a kid. He says the Bible has given clear prophecy, and I'm like, no, let me let me let me stop you right there, man. <laughs> There's at least one too many words in that sentence. I'm gonna stop you at the word clear, and I'm gonna keep you stopped at the word prophecy. Yes, exactly. prophecy is things that happen in the book you didn't write. <laughs> J.K. Rowling doesn't know the future because she knew what happened at the end of Harry Potter. <laughs> Your book. You wrote it. But he fulfilled all the prophecies, Eli. <laughs> well, didn't didn't they say he fulfilled 20 out of 109? Isn't wasn't that the number they threw yes. out? Yes. Yeah. This guy fulfilled out fulfilled 20 out of 100. Where were the other He's probably good for the other 89. At some point. <laughs> we didn't we're going to make him the Messiah. It's fine. It's fine. Shit. It's fine. Yeah. After you hit 20, it. it's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I still just can't wrap my head around the fact that everybody's just like, well, let's listen to this guy and this announcement that he's going to tell us, and whatever he says, we're just going to believe, because that's how it works. <laughs> right. right. So that's, that's how we will make our Messiah decision. Whatever this Jewish guy says, that's what we go with from now on. And then he announces on national televisions that Jesus was the Messiah. 
And I just wrote in my notes, boo, says everyone who thought they were going to hear news. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, and everyone in the in the crowd reacts like, oh, who is this Jesus? For like, ever, I would have been like, right, but who's the Messiah now? Oh, it's well, still Jesus? Why did we get together? I've heard of Jesus. I love when they cut to Theo, who acts like he's watching a football game and his favorite team just scored. Yeah. And Jesus, he goes, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Yeah! Touchdown, Jesus! <laughs> oh, and of course, uh, uh, the Antichrist could stop all of this and cut the, the, the feed since he controls all of television now. But Ray Grit Bloodshop stole the thing from the thing, so he can't use his radio. And this is the moment. Yeah, this is the moment. Where he basically just turns to the camera and says, see, this is supposed to go into radio, but I took it out earlier when they weren't looking. See this fuse? He, yeah. he has a cell phone, and he's going to remember that in a minute, but it'll be too late by then. Yeah, I expected it to before. zoom in, and it just to say, like, communications fuse with a winky yeah. emoji <laughs> next to it. <laughs> yeah, I love that he takes it out to just kind of be like, Remember when I did this? That was a good job, me. Yeah. Break, gla- break glass in case of Antichrist plot. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. This is perfect. I, I got this guy foiled. E- Eli, by the way, um, you're 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 Jewish. What? If, who's the number one rabbi in the world? In the real world, right now, who's the number one ranked rabbi? Um, um, let, you're pretty even sure. if you don't know, let's say he announced that Jesus was the Messiah. Do is that how that works? Would, would all the Jewish people convert? convert? To oh, yeah, no, I mean, like whoever the number one ranked analysis? rabbi is, yeah, it's, you know, the, one of them shat his pants the other day, and we all just universally <laughs> followed along. <laughs> well, I'm curious to know who is the number, because uh, Heath and I have a fantasy Jew League draft coming up soon, so I am kind of curious who the number one ranked Yeah, they're Jew giving away a million dollars a week, guys. I've seen all those commercials <laughs> for it on Hulu. The Associated Press poll has uh, Mel Gibson at the top, but they, you know, they're, not, they're not reliable. You guys seen that movie where Matthew McConaughey and Al Pacino try and pick who the best war rabbi is going to be? <laughs> I'll match your money. Hoo-wah! You cannot lose money on this bet. This movie makes no sense. How could this possibly be a thing? <laughs> not what Schindler's List was, guys. Right. So, oh, that's what it is. It's a fantasy. That's we're gonna make a fantasy rabbi league, and we're gonna call it <laughs> Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in third payus. Anyway, uh, so then we cut back to Nikolai, who's very upset that he was not announced as the Messiah. Yeah. He has a little yell at heaven. Where he's talking yes. to God and he's like, this I isn't over. He's basically the claw from Inspector Gadget. <laughs> I'll get you, Jesus. <laughs> Next time, Jesus. Yeah, and, and Chelsea Noble, the Hattie, the uh, slutty stewardess, comes up to him to like comfort him, I guess. She's like, yeah, sorry you didn't get named the Messiah. He's like, Leave me alone. Like, <laughs> how does this even matter to his place? This is the Antichrist. Why does he need to be named anything? I don't understand how it matters. Yeah, he could- he could just be the Antichrist. He's still it. He just he's that didn't change. <laughs> exactly. Then we get the like friendship end of the Sandlot montage oh. where Kirk very rudely yeah. walks into a church in the middle of a service, and everyone's just hugging him and talking to him. And if I were in that church, I would have been like, "Oh, rude, rude." Yeah. We're all yeah. actually already singing a song. <laughs> That's what I thought too. I was like, "This is you don't just walk in like with swagger. Like I did it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Save the world." Like, we're in the middle. We're in the, it's like a WWE <laughs> character. Oh my god, it's the Undertaker! And he walks up. Oh god, out it's of the you, hear music, you hear the lights change, you're like, no, 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 Magic fire-breathing dwarves showed up at the Wailing Wall, and a Jew told everyone in Israel that emaciated Johnny Bravo isn't the Messiah. <laughs> and uh, that and a Ray Comfort video on YouTube, and you've seen this whole fucking movie, I do believe. <laughs> yep, you crushed Don't it. Don't do it. All right, so let's try to measure this movie by its own standards here. Are any of you guys convinced to turn your lives over to Christ now? I already have. Well, I, I would like to say I personally am waiting to hear from the world's most popular rabbi. But once I hear oh. from her, I don't know if he's seen the movie and he's convinced that I, like everyone else on the planet, will be convinced. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I did realize now that uh, that I am I'm a terrible person because I, I look at people. and, and have, Yeah, you're a murderer. I'm, I'm a murderer and I, and I, and I just want to kill everyone. Now. And an so adulterer. I'm, I'm glad I realized that about all right, all right. So you're you're on the Jesus path, whether you know it or not. Yeah. So 
All right, now, it's something that that occurs to me as we watch this. I, I, I'm going to ask you guys for some predictions, because obviously the Antichrist has to fight Jesus in the next one. So I'm dying to know how that's going to go down. What do you guys think? What, what, what kind of weapons does Jesus get? You know, does gay Putin soften him up with some ninja demons first? What are we expecting? Uh, I'm going to guess that they set up a grand bo- battle royale, but instead everyone just prays and then Putin explodes in the 30 seconds of uh, <laughs> CGI that they had left for the budget for the film. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel like it's gonna be, they're gonna have a montage, like a training montage for Jesus, and then they're gonna, like, pull out a bunch of weapons, but then in the end, they're just gonna come together, and then they're just gonna be like, Jesus is gonna be like, I love you, and then the Antichrist is gonna be like, alright, you're, re- I'm sorry, hug it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking it ends with, like, the, uh, you know, Apollo Creed and Rocky almost punching each other shot. <laughs> Oh, all There's right. Jesus all right. and the Antichrist. You don't know who wins. That would they be run awesome. on a beach together first. <laughs> Then there's a post-credit shot of them lying in bed next to each other smoking. Well, that's one way to figure out who the second coming of Christ is. <laughs> <laughs> Ray- Rayford Bramfort peeks in and he's like, I got the microchip. <laughs> if only they'd given us this fucking series to finish up. So, Nick, we try to avoid the whole, like, you know, how many stars concept on this show. So instead of asking how you'd orient your thumb in reference to this movie, I want to ask you this. And I feel like you have some experience here. So how bad would a real apocalypse have to be to be worse than this movie? Are we talking pandemic, zombies, full-blown four horsemen? Where is it on the spectrum, you think? Um, I would have to say it would have to, you'd have to have an apocalypse where people don't just turn into zombies. They turn into reavers, like, uh, like in Firefly, reavers. And they just, like, they just come and they just fuck you to death constantly. And they're just like, <laughs> and it's just, it's just like horrible ways to die. And you're just trying to get away from everyone. And it's just, and everything's on fire and people are peeing blood and shitting out of their buttholes. And then that could, that maybe, maybe. Well, by the way, they're shitting out of their buttholes now. Yeah. Uh, so we're at least part way there. A, a Guys, don't tell Nick you shit out of your buttholes. <laughs> Wait, where does the shit come out of? Well, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's not, it's fine. Thanks so much for doing the podcast, yeah. man. All right, we should wrap this. <laughs> Oh, guys, we're in so much trouble. Guys, I'm going to go take a shit. Colostomy privilege. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Heath, what, what would you say is the worst movie dystopia you would choose to live in rather than watch this movie again? What do you think? <laughs> um, all right, well, um, I'm going to say I'd rather live through Jonah Hill's demon love scene from This is the End than watch this again. I thought, I, I'd like to do that. W- while anyway. watching late season episodes of Growing Pains. Oh, okay, well, in that case. Whew. And finally, Eli, tell me, what is the least enjoyable thing that you could do with Kirk Cameron that would still be better than watching this movie? I would go to a Six Flags in New Jersey (laughs) with Kirk Cameron wearing a snowsuit in the middle of July rather than watching this movie. (laughs) A snowsuit will just couples around me are like, hey, get baked, get wasted. (laughs) That is how much I hated this And then you also got to give him an uh, over-the-pants handy. That's right. (laughs) Well, you uh, you had me at New Jersey. Well, Nick, I can't thank you enough for suffering through this with us. I, I guess the least I could do is give you ample opportunity to plug your work. So if the listeners would like to hear more from you, where should they go? Um, They can follow me on Twitter. I'm Nick Carrillo, 70, at Nick Carrillo 77 And uh, I perform all over New York City at the People's Improv Theater. You can check out stuff there. I perform with Gus and Gypsy Danger and a sketch show called The Uncanny Valley. And uh, yeah, that's most of the stuff I do. Right on, right on. Awesome. And, of course, we'll have some of that linked on the description box for this episode. Nick, thanks again. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. Now, that's going to do it for our review of Tribulation Force, but that doesn't do it for the episode quite yet, because before we wrap things up, we're going to take a few minutes to shine a light on our next episode with a quick preview review. So, Eli, what's on deck? Left Behind World at War. Oh, we're finally going to get done with this goddamn thing. Yeah, exactly. Now, I have to say, after watching this preview, completely non-facetiously, I'm really excited about the third one. <laughs> yeah, me too. I gotta admit, this movie looks like it had anywhere between 10 and 20 times the budget of the other two combined. Yes. It's uh-huh. got, uh, Louis Gossett Jr. in it. Hell yeah. Which... And they show him in every <laughs> shot in the preview. They really want you to know. No, we got a real actor. No, no more of this Kirk Cameron bullshit, guys. Yeah, exactly. could, we got the could, guy could... from Enemy Mind this time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you, could... you remember Half-Life 2? <laughs> <laughs> That guy. And there's going to be snowmobiles and explosions and desert warfare. And, um, so now I, I, I want to point out, 
uh, two things about this preview that really jumped at me, other than how much Louis Gossett Jr. was on camera. A, the Antichrist has a totally different accent again this time. Mm-hmm. And B, at one point in the preview, he force chokes Louis Gossett Jr. <laughs> like Darth Antichrist. And you know what? To be honest, I am really glad because this entire two movie series, I've been waiting for the the Antichrist to force choke someone, <laughs> and it looks like we're finally going to get it in the third movie. Listen, if you're the Antichrist, the first thing you do is figure out. Well, I've tried to force choke people, and I don't have any powers. I'm just, I just try. Eh, all right, no, I can't do it. Fine, plastic, please. No. <laughs> Now, also, we, we learned that Louis Gossett Jr. is playing the president, and we also learned that he has an Academy Award, because it says on screen for like a solid 90 seconds of this two-minute preview, Academy Award winner Louis Gossett Jr. Everyone else who's in the movie... While everyone so- sounds out the word Academy in the audience. Yeah, right. Academy. <laughs> Academy. But... Uh, is that the guy from Lethal Weapon? <laughs> But I love that, like, they put his name up there and it says Academy Award uh, winner Louis Gossett Jr. All the other actors in the movie, they do away with, with just the name of the character. That's the common, de- the LCD, the lowest common denominator they're going for in this preview is, you remember these characters, right? You couldn't possibly remember their names. Hell, we don't remember their <laughs> names. <laughs> they were obviously sitting in the editing room and they were like, what's her name? <laughs> what is her name? She's Kirk's... Oh, you know what? Never mind. Let's just 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 use their character <laughs> names. We got Lou Gossett Jr. We got Lou. G- I feel like the day they got Lou, he came in and he was like, "Guys, blessings upon us. We got Lou Gossett Jr." And everyone was like, <laughs> "Got good news and bad news. We uh couldn't book Clarence Skillier Jr. We couldn't. Do it. He He's got a scheduling conflict. We couldn't. Do it. But we got Gossett Jr. Yeah, exactly. Exciting explosions." Day. We couldn't get Morgan Freeman, but we got his fat twin, fraternal <laughs> twin. <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode five to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Nick Carrillo for joining us tonight, and an enormous thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a guy from Brooklyn telling you to fuck yourself. Go fuck your mother.